to what he was saying, I would be in prison probably the rest of my life. Is it a town's shameful secret, one of the worst sex crimes ever, or a modern day witch hunt? Are you at all concerned that yes, children have been abused, but maybe in the frenzy, innocent people are being charged? John Larson with a Dateline investigation. For months, Colin Powell and Phillips. Good evening. Sexual abuse, it may no longer be a taboo subject, but in some ways it is still very much in the shadows. Just this week, the American Medical Association called sexual assault a silent epidemic, growing at an alarming rate in this country. You've heard about some high-profile child molestation cases, but tonight we bring you a case like no other. Charges of a widespread sex ring that consumed an entire town and eventually led to cries of a witch hunt. As John Larson reports, if the allegations are true, it would be one of the worst sex crimes in history. If not, then this is a story of an investigation gone very bad, a terrible miscarriage of justice. live someplace where bad things didn't happen. Springtime on the eastern slope of the Cascade Mountains in Washington State. We all know they happen everywhere, but you always wish it wasn't here. It is apple blossom season in Wenatchee. Population, 55,000. A time when this town of apple farmers celebrates the flowering of trees and the promise of fruit. But this spring arrives amidst ugly allegations. To listen to these children tell about these things that happened to them. And they're horrible. Mm -hmm. They're horrible. In America, we believe the seed which makes our country great grows best in small towns like Wenatchee, that evil is slow to take root here. But evil is exactly what police and prosecutors say has been going on here for years. The crimes, the worst imaginable, allegations of groups of adults meeting regularly to molest and rape dozens of children. Well, the initial investigation began uh, in April of last year, 94. Uh, it started with an 11-year-old boy, uh, he's a retarded boy, made a disclosure to his teacher at school. Newly appointed as sex crimes detective, Bob Perez was shocked when a boy's disclosure of sexual abuse led to the boy's own parents. This first individual here is Gene Town. This is his wife, Sherry Town. They were the first two persons arrested and charged with abusing children in their care. The sex crime job here is a rotating assignment Detective Perez had little prior experience with crimes like these. Continuing investigation led to Sid and Laura Holt. This woman was convicted and sentenced to 40 years. As the detective dug deeper. This is Mike Rose and Randy Reed, both convicted. One abuser became a group of abusers. Doris Green, currently serving 23 years and four months. The charge, molesting children ranging in ages from 6 to 11 some their own children. It continued to enlarge the number of suspects until we're where we are today with um, a potential of 40 to 50 suspects, but another 40 to 50 victims, child victims. Almost a hundred people, a virtually unprecedented number, all uncovered by Detective Perez. I'm no better of an investigator than, than anyone else. I just went a step further in the investigation. I had questions. I had questions. And Detective Perez now believes all the abusers are linked together in one huge, horrible web of sex abuse. They're not strangers that were molesting these children. They're their own parents. And then to make matters worse, their parents shared these children with other adults. It was an everyday occurrence. It was a way of life. One of the parents I mean, it gives me the statement that says, when the, when, they would, when the adults would come to the door, my boys knew the routine, and they would get undressed and go wait in the bedroom. 
Investigators now believe these extensive sex rings operated for years on a regular basis without anyone in town suspecting. Prosecutor Gary Reeson. Doesn't it seem odd that somebody wouldn't have said something or seen something or a doctor or a teacher wouldn't have noticed something? We know that from many, many, many cases that it happens for years and kids never tell about it for a number of reasons. How many girls you figure you foster parented? Probably about 350. 350 girls? Yeah. Three bunk beds in it. For eight years, so Bob Devereaux ran a foster home for abused after. kids. Uh, he had a good reputation and, and an unblemished bed. record. And how many kids at any one time? Uh, 14 is the most I've had okay. at one time. All girls? Many very troubled girls. And some of those same girls now allege Bob Devereaux forced them into orgies with dozens of adults every Friday or Saturday night in this room. Now, the court records say you took bunk beds apart in this room. Made six beds out of them. Laid them out, and anywhere from 15 to 25 adults would essentially line up and have sex with, with children. Every child. So every adult would have to have sex with 15 to 20 children in an evening here, is what's alleged. If it's true, it's, it's one of the worst sex crimes certainly I've ever heard of. Yeah, it's not true. And I, I, can, can you imagine have anybody having sex 20 times in one evening? I can't, I couldn't do that when I was 16 years old. I don't think it's possible for anybody. Hallelujah. I moved down to Wenatchee because I wanted to give people back a little bit what the Lord gave me. In March of this year, new accusations, this time involving a Pentecostal church. Pastor Robbie Robertson and his wife, accused by two of Bob Devereaux's foster girls. I was just devastated, devastated. I couldn't believe what I was even hearing. And I said, you've got to be joking. Police Chief Ken Badgley. Some of the kids disclosed that they were, some of the foster children were involved with with people, uh, and the, one of the meeting places was the church. Robertson's church is well known in this community as a sanctuary for the down and out, running one of the only food banks in town. You? But Detective Perez says the pastor was also running a child sex ring in the church basement almost every Friday night, the same night some of these children also alleged they were abused at the Devereaux home. Robertson was charged and arrested. We've worked hard for this community and we've given everything we possibly could give to this community. And here we are. To date, 38 people in Wenatchee have been charged in connection with the sex rings. And it is by no means over yet. I'll never be able to arrest every child molester. I'll never find out who every child molester in Wenatchee is. And I don't have any, any illusions about that. But what I will do is, for the time I'm at this desk, I will do my best to make sure that they're all rounded up, the ones that I'm made aware of. Of the 10 people charged last year in the first alleged ring, only two went to trial and were convicted. Another three pled guilty, but the rest pled no contest. But that was last year. All the other suspects, including Bob Devereaux, Pastor Robertson, and his wife, have come up since, and they have vigorously denied the charges. Read the statements of these people. These people are guilty and I'm not gonna feel bad for him. If it were that simple, there wouldn't be much of a story here. A story that incredibly would hinge largely on the accusations of one girl, just 10 years old. When we come back, the town of Wenatchee splits apart. Amid charges, the investigation has turned into a witch hunt. Everyone that has spoken out against it has been jailed. That's their way of silencing us. It's coming. Here now is Jane Pauley. We return now to our story. The people of Wenatchee, Washington have watched in horror as dozens of suspects were arrested and charged with sexually abusing children. But, as John Larson explains, there are disturbing questions about the way the investigation has been conducted 
and about the children making the charges. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, the Bible says that in the last days, evil men will wax worse and worse. In Pastor Robbie Robertson's Pentecostal Church, they believe good will triumph over evil, eventually. Oh God, Lord, we pray your mercies upon those today, God, that are so involved in something that is so wrong. But lately, that faith has been tested, and only a handful of parishioners now come to services. Hallelujah. As terrible as sexual abuse of children is, there is another explanation for what might be going on here. Remember the Salem witch trials back in colonial America, where a town, overcome by hysteria, accused innocent men and women of witchcraft and sentenced them to death? Well, there are many people in Wenatchee, some at this church, who believe something similar is happening here. They believe an investigation has become a witch hunt. Uh, was questioned by the detectives and literally uh, threatened and said that... Pastor Robertson pointed out he was arrested shortly after he questioned Detective Perez's investigation at this protest meeting. Oh, I know that this family is innocent. They've tried to... Our pastor, he told us two months before that, uh, he was arrested that Bob Perez told him that if he didn't keep his mouth shut and stay out of it, that they would arrest him. Church members Marv and Lynette Sparks. Everyone that has spoken out against it has been jailed. That's their way of silencing us. You are the song that I sing. And since Dateline was here, other church members have been arrested, including this woman, Hannah Sims, the Sunday school teacher. Pastor Robertson spoke up in defense of his parishioners, Idella and Harold Everett, who were jailed after they pled no contest to charges of raping their children. Robertson had documents in which the Everett's oldest child says there was no sexual abuse. And Robertson pointed out, Idella Everett is retarded. She may have pled no contest, but he believes she didn't understand what that meant. As for Harold, he's illiterate. In fact, prosecutors admit that many of those arrested are, in the prosecution's own words, low functioning. Most pled guilty or no contest, which means most of the accusers, most of the children, had never been cross-examined. And yet these early cases convinced investigators that something larger was happening in Wenatchee. Are you at all concerned that Yes, there are guilty people here. Yes, children have been abused. But maybe in the frenzy, innocent people are being charged. Well, we would certainly hope that hasn't happened. I mean, that's every prosecutor's horror that you would make an accusation that was unsupported by, by probable cause. Uh, but in these cases, the, the, the system has a way to, to sort of check and balance those things. My fear is that I would wrongly accuse someone and they would be convicted. That is my fear, and I live with it every day, and that's what keeps me focused, okay? In this town, you're guilty till you prove yourself innocent. Before his arrest, Bob Devereaux was considered a good foster father. There's a lot of memories in those pictures. Memories of uh, happy kids, scared kids, mad kids, uh, I miss it. In fact, the county relied on Devereaux knowing he would always take the most difficult girls. Ironically, many were sexual abuse victims, some with a history of false accusations. For years, I've seen the aftermath of what rape does. I'd be the last one in the world to rape a girl, because I know what they go through. I've seen. I've seen the tears. He was like a father to all of the kids that were there. He, you know, he treated everybody like they were his own. He... These girls were foster children in the Devereaux home when some of the rapes were alleged to have happened. They say the house was always open, that there was never a time when Devereaux was alone with any girls. 
Because we know that none of this happened at Bob's house. We live there. Yeah. I mean, you, it would be really hard to miss a 40-person orgy. But in August of last year, one of Devereaux's foster children, a 15-year-old girl known in court papers as A.R., told Detective Perez that Devereaux had been raping her and other girls for years. Perez arrested Devereaux, the first step of a legal nightmare. First, I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was some kind of a joke. And the more he talked, he started threatening and saying I was going to be in prison the rest of my life. But the very next day, A.R., who suffers from fetal alcohol syndrome, was with her social worker, Paul Glasson, when she made a startling confession. And after some time, she then blurted out that she had told a whole bunch of lies to a police officer the previous day. And she began to say that she had, in effect, been pressured. I recall her saying, and I made some notes about this, she said that the officer had told her that the foster parent did improper things. Glasson immediately reported that A.R. was now saying she had falsely accused Bob Devereaux. But surprisingly, that information did not stop the investigation. And what happened next was even more startling. Within 24 hours, I was uh, arrested and uh, booked on suspicion of witness tampering. Ironically, uh, child described being coerced and now I was being accused with coercing her to change her story. I was astounded. A social worker who had dedicated 28 years of his life to helping children was now accused of threatening a child and interfering with an investigation. Meanwhile, Detective Perez had interviewed another foster girl, A.S., who also accused Devereaux. Then, Perez interviewed a 10-year-old girl known as D.E., who claimed Devereaux held weekly orgies in his foster home. D.E. soon became Perez's star witness. She drove around town with him, pointing out at least 22 houses where she claimed she'd been sexually abused. Eventually, it was D.E., with the help of A.S., who implicated the church, Pastor Robertson, and tied all of the sex rings together. You have to imagine, if you're a 10-year-old child, that you're going to have to talk about 50, 60, 70 adults who have sexually abused you since you were five years old, which is her earliest recollection. It's pretty incredible. How credible is it? A 10-year-old girl, D.E., claims she has been abused for half her life by up to 70 adults. And what bothers critics is that D.E. and A.S. are star witnesses in almost every recent accusation. Some who know the girls say they are not to be trusted. A.S. is a liar. <laughs> it's an ongoing history that she, she accuses everybody. Yeah, she had falsely accused other people in the past, from what I understand. A.S. had falsely accused a social worker, a teacher, and a number of foster parents of sexual abuse. I believe if she was able to talk to you by herself, she'd tell you nothing happened. And D.E.? D.E. was raped at a very young age in an unrelated case. But this brings up a new question. By D.E.'s count, she's been sexually attacked hundreds of times. Wouldn't she have suffered severe and obvious physical damage? Well, I don't know how, unless, I, I'm not a physician, but I, I don't know how you discern whether a child's been uh, molested more than once. Physical evidence won't prove all the new allegations. Of course not. Prosecutors say it will come down to the child's word against the accused. But are they her words? Or was someone putting those words in her mouth? In a moment, a startling revelation about the child accusers and new questions about the detective leading the investigation. Is he out of control? You'd have to believe again that I, on my own, am running crazy through the streets just arresting people at random because I have nothing better to do. Please, please, my brother needs help! Dateline. The nightmare continues. Several alleged sex rings have been exposed thanks primarily to one 10-year-old girl. But is her story believable? John Larson has some unexpected information about the girl who is so pivotal to this case.
child molesters are the lowest form of life. They prey on little children who cannot defend themselves. I'm not the, the best investigator in the world, but I will take up the cause of these kids, and I will believe them, and I will defend them. For all his passion, Detective Perez has become a target of criticism. It's the devil has just taken over. <laughs> and the only sex ring is in that man's head. I mean... <laughs> Critics of Perez's investigation wonder why. If so many adults were raping so many children for so many years, why weren't there any accusations until just last year when Detective Perez took over as sexual abuse investigator? And why did the detective star witness, D.E., wait so long to begin accusing so many people? Her accusations only began last year when she moved in with a new foster family with a foster father who might surprise you. When our foster child began to disclose what had happened to her in her home, it was a real shock. It was a real shock. That's right. D.E., the star witness in the Wenatchee sex ring investigation, began her accusations only after she moved in with Detective Bob Perez, the lead investigator. Well, let's, let's separate it out, okay? First, from 8 to 4, usually, I'm an investigator for the police department. And from 4 o'clock on, I am just a private citizen in my home. And I'm a parent, and I'm a foster parent. But it's not that simple. Most of DE's accusations originated during interviews with the detective, not in the police station, but each night in their home, alone. It got to the point because there were so many that she wanted to talk about as time went on, and this was after 10 months, 11 months in our home, that I would tell her, look, if you want to tell me about someone, you can tell me about one or two tonight, and then that's it for tonight. And it, there were just too many, she said. There was just too many. But there's no way to prove what D.E. really said. Perez didn't tape any of the interviews. He only took notes. Notes he wrote up, sometimes days later, then destroyed. Often the devil is in the details. Cornell University's Dr. Stephen Sisi is an expert in child sex rings. While he hasn't studied the Wenatchee case, he says without a record of the interview, we can never know if the child is simply telling the investigator what she thinks he wants to hear. Where you have the chief emotional provider in a child's life, also providing the key forensic evidence. It creates worrisome boundary crossing issues for me. Uh, that person ought not to be the one wearing both those hats. We're talking about a child that for the first time, and I mean the first time in her life, felt safe, felt loved by someone. And if every single one of these cases that are tied to her testimony go down the drain tomorrow, so be it before I would take that child and put her through the trauma of another home and adjusting to something else, they could drop them all. And Detective Perez says his cases don't depend on D.E. alone. D.E.'s interviews have led him to other children, children who corroborate her accusations. If you just looked at one child's disclosure, it, it might sound just totally off the wall if you just listened to one. When you look at all of them all together, there's a, a consistent pattern there. What usually happens is there's a trigger. One child makes one disclosure at a certain point in time, and it grows from there. <laughs> Dr. Sisi says his research with children here at Cornell shows they can be led, even by well-meaning investigators, to say things that just aren't true. This is what we call creating an air of accusation. We do know this from scientifically controlled studies that if you pursue kids who did not have the experience using those same techniques, your friends already told me, it's okay to tell, I know you were there, that a certain percentage of those kids will falsely assent. And that's exactly what critics of Perez say is happening in Wenatchee. These are given to children that come in here after their interviews are complete or for them to hold uh, to make them feel better. Critics say that during these interviews, Perez puts words in the children's mouths. Remember A.R., the girl who recanted after she accused Bob Devereaux? 
She says Perez bullied her until she made false accusations. And she's not the only one. He told me that I was there because he said that I'd been molested or something kind of like that. This 11-year-old girl is one of seven children who have accused Detective Perez of trying to coerce them into making false accusations. I ain't never been molested. You told him that, honey, that you've never been molested? Yeah. Okay. In this tape, made by activists critical of Perez, the girl claims the detective threatened to have her mother arrested if she didn't tell him about abuse. I was just crying and everything because I didn't want my mom to go to jail and stuff mm -hmm. and then he kept on asking me a whole bunch of questions and I... police did charge the girl's mother donna rodriguez with child rape the girl says she was so afraid of perez she made a false statement <coughs> were you telling the truth or were you just agreeing with him i was just agreeing with him detective perez says he's not coercing anyone he says it's his critics who are intimidating witnesses into recanting and slandering him. They can scream as loud as they want, and they can beat me up all day long in the press, okay? I'm a big boy, I can take it, okay? But they better not hurt these kids. But it's not just children. Adult suspects Dateline interviewed claimed Perez tried to bully them into confessing, even lied about what they said. Listen to Bob Devereaux. Did he suggest that you say certain things? He told me what I had done. He didn't ask me what I'd done. He told me what I had done. And he wanted me to confess to it. Devereaux says adults who have never been in his home are accusing him because they caved in to Perez's bullying. Was Linda Miller ever over here? No, she's never been over here. I don't know what happened. I just know that I, I named people that I don't even know, never met, couldn't, couldn't recognize them on the street. Other than to say it was the worst day in my life. The worst. Linda Miller has a history of psychological problems. She did confess to raping children, but she says Perez told her what to say. Every time I said something, he called me a liar and says, I, I know when you're telling me the truth because I already know the truth. And anything you have to say is irrelevant. And you will tell me the truth or you will never, ever see your children and you'll rot in prison. The very next day, she took back her confession, but it has still been introduced in several trials. I'm sorry that people are being falsely accused based on a statement that I should never have signed because it's a pack of lies and it's vicious and it's horrible to be accused. Linda Miller herself was recently convicted of child molestation. There is evidence that Detective Perez has a history of bullying people. In a 1989 performance evaluation obtained by Dateline, his own supervisors criticized Perez, saying he, quote, likes confrontation and likes having power over people, is developing a reputation of being a hothead in the community, appears to pick out people and target them. The report did say he was generally a good cop with tremendous potential, and co-workers say his recent evaluations have improved. You'd have to believe again that I, on my own, am running crazy through the streets just arresting people at random because I have nothing better to do. If you can believe that, then let's let them all go. Okay? Or you can believe a, a five, six-year-old, seven-year-old child that will sit in here at my desk and clutch a, a stuffed animal and tell you in graphic detail what happened to them. It's difficult to know what is true in Wenatchee. I have no idea what's gonna to happen tomorrow. And neither do the people of Wenatchee. Remember Paul Glasson, the social worker who alerted authorities that one of the girls had admitted she lied? Now, even Paul Glasson has been named by Detective Perez as a child rape suspect, a charge he categorically denies. I, I couldn't understand why this was happening. That's it, what it was, who's there? Detective Perez believes almost a hundred people are involved in the sex rings, and there may be more. 
Prosecutors say the accused will have their day in court, but so would Detective Perez's investigation, which would soon come under intense scrutiny in a dramatic trial. Still ahead, after months of horrifying accusations, the children at the center of the Wenatchee sex ring case take the stand and face their alleged abusers. Studios in New York, here again is Stone Phillips. The day had finally come. The little girls would take the stand and tell their stories of alleged sexual abuse at the hands of dozens of adults. Now remember, one of the girls, known as D.E., lives with Detective Perez, the man who targeted the suspects. What would the jurors decide? From the dramatic testimony to the stunning verdicts, John Larson continues the story. I would have rather been accused of murder. Then you can defend yourself against something. This is a ghost you can't fight. As the summer came to an end and spring blossoms became fruit, after five months of accusations and arrests, the first accused church member goes to trial. Hannah Sims, the Sunday school teacher. For the first time, the question at the very center of this story, are the girls, the key witnesses, telling the truth, is being asked not just on the streets of Wenatchee, but in a court of law. Do you know the difference between a, a good touch and a bad touch? Mm -hmm. I want to be an example of a bad touch. Like if somebody touches you where they're not supposed to. Hidden behind a stuffed bear, D.E., one of the prosecution's two star witnesses, testified in Hannah Sims' trial that she and more than 20 other children were molested every week in Pastor Robertson's church basement by as many as 40 adults. At first, her testimony was extremely disturbing. Um, the guys would take their privates inside of mine. About the ladies, what would they do? Put their fingers inside of me. But under cross-examination by defense attorney Robert Van Sicklin, her testimony appeared to falter. First, she was unable to identify the alleged crime scene. Are these photographs of the Sunday school classes in the basement? You recognize those at all? Then, D.E. couldn't provide any details or descriptions of the alleged rapes. What did you hear when they were touching you? I didn't hear anything. Okay. What did you smell when they were touching you? I didn't smell anything. Okay. Did the floor have a carpet like we see here in the courtroom, or did it have a bare cement floor? Do you recall? I don't remember. It is possible, because of the trauma, that D.E. has no memory of the details. Could you see their private before they put it in yours? Yeah. Yes. While D.E. does claim to remember being raped hundreds of times, the defense pointed out that she was unable to describe what would seem to be the most obvious detail, what a man's sex organ looks like. Okay. Can you describe what it looked like? No, because I don't remember what it looks like. These jurors say that when the trial started, they assumed the prosecution had solid evidence to justify bringing such serious charges. I was shocked that there was no evidence. There just wasn't any evidence other than the, the testimony of the children. There wasn't any, any kind of hard evidence. And you found yourself thinking, and that's all? And, th and that's it. That was it. Yeah. I was shocked. And jurors noticed something else. On the stand, D.E. sounded innocent and scared. But when she wasn't testifying, she appeared just the opposite, laughing and chatting with social workers in court. For D.E., I saw that she was a little girl who was being led around and really thought it was quite funny that she was there and was, looked like she was having a pretty good time. And for A.S., I saw a cold, hard stare. When A.S., the other star witness, took the stand, she admitted that she had lied in the past, falsely accusing innocent people of sexually abusing her. And I didn't find either girl to be very credible at all. Uh, it looked, seemed very rehearsed, as though they had told the story many, many times. You got the sense that D.E. was making up these stories to please her foster father. I thought they had been suggested to her and she was elaborating on them to, yes, to please someone. To please the detective. Yeah. The jurors say they reached a verdict almost immediately. 
we the jury find the defendant on L. Sounds not guilty of the crime of rape of a child and first I wasn't on trial here. Who was on trial? The situation. This is going to send the message to Bob Perez himself that he is not above the law. One week after Sims was acquitted, prosecutors dropped all charges in another sex ring case involving Donna Rodriguez, the mother of the little girl who accused Detective Perez of coercing her. John Henry Brown, a prominent Seattle lawyer, represented Donna Rodriguez. No matter how good your case is, a an allegation of child abuse is so hard to defend against because people want to, to believe that children don't lie, which we now know is not true at all. It's like trying to prove you're not a witch. And in Wenatchee, that may depend on who you are and who represents you. Unlike Hannah Sims, Manuel Rodriguez is a poor Mexican immigrant who speaks no English, who relied on a lawyer paid for by the state. Is it the verdict of the jury? Hannah Sims' lawyer convinced jurors that D.E. and A.S. were not believable, but another jury convicted Rodriguez on similar charges. We the jury find the defendant Manuel Hidalgo Rodriguez guilty. All the people targeted in this case are poor people, are disadvantaged, most, many disabled poor people. They're easy people to pick on. Um, and anybody now who's putting up a fight is getting their cases dismissed or being found not guilty. Hey, Mr. Devereaux, please stand. Remember Bob Devereaux? On September 8th, his lawyer advised him to plead guilty to two minor misdemeanors not related to the sex charges. And then, after more than a year in a stunning about face, prosecutors dropped all sex charges against him. I just put myself on the mercy of the court. I think I've been through enough. Bob Devereaux has been cleared of all sex abuse charges but he is ruined. He will never again work as a foster father. He had to sell his house, and he left Wenatchee, virtually penniless. We'll be with you in Apple Blossom time. The Apple Blossom Festival is long over to return next year, but will Wenatchee be the same? Bob Devereaux's case, so central to the sex ring cases, has been dropped. Jurors in the Hanna Sims trial didn't believe there had been any sex in the church. But prosecutions and convictions continue. The pastor goes to trial next week with new charges, new witnesses. Manuel Rodriguez is serving six years, his case on appeal. Linda Miller, also on appeal, is serving 33 years. Paul Glasson, the social worker who blew the whistle, is out of the country, afraid to return to Wenatchee. And the star witness, D.E., now age 11, she was recently charged with malicious mischief after she threw a tantrum in Bob Perez's home. Removed for several weeks for psychiatric observation, D.E. is now back with the detective. But authorities say neither she nor A.S. will testify in any more trials. So what really happened in Wenatchee? There is little doubt that some of the early cases involved actual abuse. But did the investigation then go too far? Relying on confused and disturbed children, intimidating and coercing witnesses? Did authorities, in their zeal to do what was right, do something horribly wrong? Who's going to stop this? Where's this going to stop? I mean, how can you stop it? Will, will the children... Um renege and, and take back all the things they've said. Who's going to stop this? Just today, D.E.'s half-sister pleaded guilty to an incest charge involving another girl. She insists she's innocent, but agreed to a guilty plea to avoid a longer sentence. She now faces 14 months. D.E. and the other girls, the accusers, are still in protective custody. Dateline was not allowed to interview them. As for Bob Devereaux, he's planning to file a multi-million dollar lawsuit against Detective Bob Perez, social workers, and the city of Wenatchee. In the meantime, the governor of Washington has asked Attorney General Janet Reno to investigate whether there may have been any wrongdoing in the Wenatchee prosecutions. Still ahead, what happens after someone is cleared of child abuse charges? Dateline's Question of the Week.
But first, he was mobbed at the bookstores. A front runner, Dateline, will continue after this brief minute. Stories we're working on for Friday's Dateline. It's a homeowner's nightmare. You dish out thousands of dollars, and this is what you get. After the job is done. The accusations that tore apart when Atchie Washington brings us to our question of the week. The child abuse allegations in Wenatchee led to charges against 38 people, and some are calling it a witch hunt. We wanted to know how you felt about this issue, so we asked 502 adults, if someone has been charged and acquitted in a child abuse case, would you still be suspicious of them? I wouldn't necessarily assume the person was guilty, but I definitely would be suspicious. No matter what, you're going to be suspicious just because charges were brought up. A lot of people get accused on, uh... Uh, without any uh, right to be accused. Our poll results show that 12% weren't sure. 11% said no, an acquittal would remove all suspicion. But an overwhelming majority, 77%, said yes, they would still be suspicious even if the suspect was cleared. And that's Dateline for this Wednesday. We'll see you for Dateline Friday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central Time. I'm Stone Phillips, and for all of us here at NBC News, good night.